All right. Well, picking up, we have barely hit on unit 3.3. That's where we're picking up. Just a reminder, 3.2 is due tonight. Um, and also, we'll talk at the end of class, but the unit quiz is over 3.1, So uh, that's got to be on our radar. All right, have your calculator down if you don't already. We're going to learn some new um, calculator functions today. Um, okay, so just a reminder, we are talking about linear functions, and the difference is they have a constant rate of change. So we had looked at this example one that said, if you're given tables and if you're asked to show or prove if the table is linear, then what I'm asking you to do is to show average rate of change and compare. Here they were equal. So yes, it's linear. They have a constant rate of change. Here they were not. So it does not have a constant rate of change. Okay. So that's what we had left off on on Monday. All right. So starting here, said so remember that the rate of change, so this is your average rate of change, is a linear function. So it makes a line, and the slope is represented by what I say. Screen just kind of turned off for a little bit. Oh, I was going, did I say something wrong? I, oh, okay, I didn't see it glitch, so, okay. So the main thing that I want to remind you is whether you're talking about average rate of change or slope, those two are interchangeable. They mean the exact same thing, okay? All right, we also talked about when we have a line, so I'm just going to... Draw a line right here. But this is a function and it is linear, so we know it has a constant rate of change. Okay, so here is the equation right here. And we talked about, and hopefully you recall, y is the same thing as your function. M is your what? Slope. What can you tell me about the slope of this line? It's negative, it's negative because it's decreasing. Mm -hmm. All right, x is your variable plus b. What is b? It's your y-intercept, which is also your initial value. All right. We also talked about how something was always true at the initial value. Does anybody recall what that truth is? <clears throat> Here's my initial value right here. Think about what that ordered pair would be. The variable or the X is always zero. So if you were to write the ordered pair, it would always be zero and then some number. And so that's helpful to remember that the variable value at your initial value is always, always, always zero. Okay. All right. So we are now going to do something different on our calculator. We are going to learn how to plot data points. So this is something we haven't done. Okay, so get your calculator out if you don't have it out already. All right, this first step that we're going to do, notice it says we only have to do this the first time. So this step that we're getting ready to go through, you only have to do once. We're going to do it once right now, and then you don't have to do it again. All right. Turn your calculator on. All right, it says press second y equals. So second is the blue button, y equals. And this should pop up. It says stat plot. And we want one. So we're going to hit one. 
All right, so this first line, notice how you have plot one, plot two, plot three. Put it over plot one. If your plot one is not, see how mine is, is uh, shaded or whatever. If yours is not, put it over plot one and hit enter. And then go down arrow and it should then have the dark around it. All good there? Okay. So we want our plot one on. So on on, I'm going to hit enter. And then when I down arrow, it should show on. And then lastly, where it says type. So this first one is a scatter plot. Then you can see how this will plot different things for you. Whoops. We want the scatter plot, the first one. So put it over that one and hit enter and then make sure that's the one that is shaded behind it, okay? We good? All right. Now we're gonna go to press stat. So the button that says stat and we will choose edit, which is one. Okay. Now I have numbers in my list, anybody else? Okay, now, even if you don't, I need you to listen to this. This is really important. If you mess up, I can fix it, but it, it, it's just easier not to mess up. I want to clear out these numbers. I don't want them in there. I want you to clear yours out too. Do not, do not, do not hit the delete button of what I'm getting ready to show you, okay? All right, so I'm in my list two. I'm going to up arrow to where my cursor is on list two and now what you're going to hit is the clear button not delete if you hit delete that whole list goes away i just want to clear the numbers out so i hit clear and then i'm going to hit down arrow and they're all gone and then i'm going to go up to my cursor over list one i'm going to hit clear and then down arrow and all the numbers are gone. Okay, everybody good there? Everybody's cleared out? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to practice the data by using this one up here. All right, list one will always be your variable values. So that's these numbers that are on top. So I'm gonna hit zero, enter, two, enter, four, enter, six, enter, eight, enter. needs to look like this. Oh, that you can't see. It needs to look like this. Okay. All right, now I'm going to right arrow over to go under list two. List two will always be your function values. So that will be 10 enter, 15 enter, 20 enter, 25 enter, 30 enter. All right, I wanna make sure everybody's where I'm at. Anybody having any difficulty? Okay. So what we have done is we've entered our X or our variable data into list one. We've entered our function or our Y data into list two. I already told you how to clear those out. That's what this is explaining. Okay, so do you remember when we put in an equation and then we <coughs> wanted to look at its graph, what would we always go hit? Zoom zero. Zoom zero. So now when we enter in table, we are going to do zoom again, but now it's zoom nine. So zoom nine, and it should look like this. Okay, so let's clear out your equation there. Anybody else?
we must have an equation here. There you go. Yeah, go to y equals, clear out your equation, both equations, and now go to the mm -hmm. nine. Okay, let's Anybody else? I go to y equals, clear out your equations. And then after you do that, it's through nine. Yeah, some of y'all have equations in there. Probably should have mentioned that first. So to get just the scatter plot of those data points, be sure you don't have anything in your y1 equals and your y2 equals. Okay. All right. Now go to now go to I should have done it earlier, but go to y equals. So just based upon me walking around the room, there shouldn't be any equations in there. Okay. Notice how my plot one is shaded. That's because we turned it on. Now, if I wanted to turn it off, I don't have to go back and do this first time step again. I can just cursor up, hit enter, and turn the plot off. And then if I want to turn the plot back on, I come up, hit enter, and it's back on. The reason we did this the first time is to make sure you had the scatter plot. So we wanted to make sure you had the scatter plot, okay? So now you can just cursor up there, okay? All right, so just go ahead and quit. We'll go back to that here in a minute. Let's look at, and we're going to actually apply it to a problem now. All right, as a diver descends into the ocean, pressure increases. Notice it says linearly with depth as given in the table below. Okay. So at this point in this class, I would hope that you know that on top is your variable. So in our calculator, that would be your X value. And the bottom is your function, which is your Y. So if I ask you to define the function in the variable, you can just pull it right here from the table. Everybody good with that? So we know function is P and variable is D. Okay. All right. So this first question states, show that the data can be modeled by a linear function. Okay, I mentioned this Monday, as well as at the beginning of this class. If it states you for you to show it's linear from a table, what am I asking you to calculate? Average, Average rate of change. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do it for the first two. And then we'll always choose the last two. That's sufficient. You don't have to do every one of them, okay? All right, so we're gonna calculate the average rate of change from zero to 10, and it's the change in function. So my numerator will be 19.5 minus 15 over 10 minus zero. So somebody please calculate that for me and tell me what it is. If, give me two decimal places if 0 0.45 or five. Okay. All right. So remember your function is on top. So that this 0 0.45 is the pressure that is pounds per square inch. That's LBS for pounds and inches to the second power per square inch per one what? Okay, all right, so now we're gonna do the same thing, 20 to 30. So this would be 28.5 minus 24, 30 minus 20. Now, they told me it was linear. I'm gonna guess you calculate the exact same number. Am I correct? Yes.
All right. So if this were on a quiz or a test, I would be looking for your calculations of the average rate of change and then telling me, yes, it's linear because the average rate of change is what? Constant. So we can see that the function, the pressure, is increasing at a constant rate. Okay, second part. If P is the pressure and D is the depth below the surface, write an equation that expresses P is the function, which it is in my table, of D, so we know D is the variable, okay? All right, so we know that we take the linear equation, Y equals MX plus B, knowing that M is the slope, B is the initial value. My Y is the function, so I'm gonna label that P equals, we calculated the slope right here is the average rate of change, right? So in place of M, I'm going to put 0.45. X is my variable, which is D plus B. All right. So I've got my slope, but I don't have my initial value yet. How did we do that in 3.2? Say that again. Use from one of the, like, Correct. Use an ordered pair, right? So this is an ordered pair 0, 15. This is an ordered pair 10, comma 19.5. This is an ordered pair 2024. 20, this is an ordered pair 30, 28.5. You can use any, any of them. You get the same initial value. I'm going to pull the first one. So I'm going to use 0, 15. And remember that the first one is your variable, which is D. The second one is your function, which is P. So in place of P, I'm going to put 15. In place of D, I'm going to put zero. Of course, we know that's zero. So we're going to get 15 equals B. Now, what is this? That's your initial value. Okay. I want to pause before we write the equation. On the prior page, we talked about initial value. And we had a discussion about what is always true about the ordered pair from the initial value. X is zero. The variable or X is zero. Look at that first one. Is the variable in this ordered pair zero? So automatically, I could look up here and say, this is my initial value without going through these steps. Mm -hmm. But here's why I go through those steps, because if all I did was just pulled it from here, the next time, if it was 215, I will have some students that go, oh, this first one is always the initial value. And that is not true. If it's a zero, then yes, this is the initial value. But if I had 215, then I cannot use that as the initial value, okay? But if you recognize that and you do have the variable of zero and you can recognize that, hey, that's my initial value and not have to do this work, okay? All right, so now we're gonna write the equation. And it is P equals slope times variable D plus B. Again, you don't have to rewrite that. I just do in notes. So if you're referring back to notes, you know where everything came from. And then when I'm asking for the equation, I only substitute numbers back in for the M and the B. Okay, so P equals slope. 0.45 variable D, and then my initial value is positive 15, so we would say plus 15. 
So again, if you recognized right off the bat that 15 was your initial value, you could have gone straight to the equation. But if you know you do some self-reflection and if you know if you try to take that shortcut that you'll always want to take that shortcut even when it's not true, then do this always. Okay, part C, we're going to plot the points. Okay, now that means we're going to need our calculator. But first, I'm going to go ahead and draw my vertical and my horizontal axis because I know Ms. Schamberg is always going to be cranky about the labeling, right? The vertical axis is representative of what? The function. So I'm going to label this P, which is pressure that is measured in pounds per square inches. And then my horizontal is my variable, which is D, and this represents depth in terms of feet. Okay? All right. So when we go to the calculator and I have to plot the data points. So this is the first thing that we're going to do is plot the data points. So where do I go first? Second line here. I don't have to do that now. That was that one time only. Why? I'm not y equals because I'm not entering an equation. Stat one. Stat one. So stat one, and that's edit. Now, my numbers are in there. So again, we're not going to hit delete. We're going to hit clear. I'm going to put my cursor over list two, hit clear, down arrow. Put my cursor over list, list one, hit clear, down arrow. <clears throat> so now, list one is from your variables on the table. And list two is your function numbers from the table. So I'm going to write this on up here too. This is your list one. This is your list two. Zero, 10, 20, 30. 19.5, 24, 28.5. Okay, so we've got all of those in there. Now what do we do? Zoom nine. And it should look like this. You turned your plot off. So if we went to y equals cell plot, one's not on, you got to come back up here and mm -hmm. it. Now do the there's go to y equals. You need to put your cursor and hit enter. Now do zoom. Okay. Anybody else? Did it come up, Brett? Yeah. Okay. All right. So if I plot those, I usually just do little X's. So if I want it to look similar, looks like here, here. Now well, mine aren't evenly spaced like it is on my calculator, but it's close enough. Okay. And it makes sense. I have four points, I have one, two, one, two, three, four ordered pairs. So this is plotting those ordered pairs, okay? And doesn't it make sense? You said my initial value was B, which is 15. What would that ordered pair be? Zero. Zero. Zero 15. 
So zero and it goes up 15. So all those things are making sense, okay? All right, so then it says, and add the graph. Okay, so now I need to add the graph. How do we add the graph? What is it wanting me to enter? How did we do graphs before? But you had to do something before zoom zero. You have to go in and do y1 equals, and we're going to put in this equation that we created. So we're going to go to y equals, we're on y1, and we're going to put in 0.45x plus 15. Now you don't have to do zoom zero, okay? We already took care of the zoom with zoom nine. So now, since that's been taken care of, we've seen it in our window, all we have to do is go to graph, which is this button right here. And because it's linear, then that line should go through every one of those points. So then I'm gonna come to my graph and I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. So we have we have um, created the equation. We've looked at it on a graph. So more than likely, then you're going to be asked some questions about your equation with this being the function and this being the variable. And that's what part D does. All right. It reads how deep can a scuba diver go if the safe pressure for his equipment and experience is 40 pounds per square inch? Okay, so when you've been working on something for a long time, it's very easy to forget which is my variable and which is my function. So I'm like, okay, pounds per square inch, pounds per square inch goes with Function. So they are giving us the function value. And the letter P goes with function. So it's P equals, and that's 40 pounds per square inch. So now what we're going to need to do is put this value in the correct place in this formula. And that 40 will replace the P, not the D. So we're going to have 40 equals 0 0.45 D plus 15. Now, prior to this, we went in and we would do Y1 and then Y2. But y'all, this is linear. So we can just solve for D. We don't have to go in and enter this as Y2. So we're going to subtract 15, which gives us 25 equals 0 0.45D. And then we're going to undo that multiplication by applying division. All right, so go to your calculator, do 25 divided by 0.45 and round to two decimal places for me. 55.86. And what are we talking about here? This is the depth you can go to be safe. Anybody been scuba diving? Have you? You like it? Is it scary at first? Was it hard to breathe in the tank to learn that? I, I think I, I fear I would panic. Yeah, totally right. which is not what you want to do right um also and i won't tell you the whole story because then it might ruin scuba diving for you but my husband and i one of the things we like to do is go to national parks we've been to utah one spring break i think we went to Utah and did a whole loop of five different national parks. There was another time we went to Glacier National Park. Well, I'm kind of weird. In, well, one thing, I like the true crime podcast, Law and Order. That's kind of my thing. 
And so what do I Google when we're at a national park? The different ways people have died in national parks. <laughs> and so at Glacier, there was a whole deep dive I did with a young lady that had scuba, scuba dived, scuba dove. Um, and yeah, so there was some negligence there. So be very careful and don't be negligent. Yeah, and yeah. It, so, but after reading that deep dive, I don't think I will do any deep diving. So, okay. Whoops, I'm on the wrong page. I need to do 45, sorry. Okay, sample three. Coronary risk increases with cholesterol level according to the following table. Okay, so again, the top is always your variable, which is your X. In the calculator, the bottom is always your function, which is your Y. All right, show that this data, so again, there's that word show, can be modeled by a linear function. Okay, anytime you're asked for this, I want you to show me the average rate of change calculations. We're gonna do it for the first two and the last two, okay. Average rate of change, change in function, 17.6 minus 16, change in variable, 220 minus 210. Does anybody have that calculated? Two decimal places, please. Wait, one six. One six. Okay, so functions on the top. So this is percentage of coronary risk. Variable is the denominator, which is cholesterol level of milligrams per deciliter. All right, um, that was 210 to 220. So now we're going to do the same thing from 230 to 240. All right, so... 20.8 minus 19.2 to 40 minus 230. Am I guessing well that you get the same thing? Okay, so this shows me that we have a constant rate of change. So, yes. It's linear because the average rate of change is constant. Okay. Okay. So then it goes on to say and find a formula. All right. So we know that Y equals MX plus B, but Y is my function. So R equals, we just found slope to be 0.16. X is my variable, which is I plus B. Okay. So in the last example, we had the discussion that in reality, the table actually gave us the initial value is the initial value given in the table? No, because we don't have any of these variables of zero. So we're gonna have to plug in a uh, ordered pair. Again, it wouldn't matter which one, I'm just gonna use the first one. 210, 16, be careful, don't put 210 in for R, R is your function, so that would be 16 equals 0 0.16 times 210 plus B, so 16. I have no idea what 16 times 210 is. 33.6. 33.6. So then we're going to subtract that from both sides. So I did that wrong. Negative 17.6. We have just found what? 
Initial value. Initial value. All right, so now we have all the pieces we need to write a formula. So I'm going to go back to my function r equals, we put a numerical value in for the slope, which we know to be 0.16, variable i, and now I want to put the numerical value in for the y, uh, it is the y-intercept, but the initial value. You can either put plus negative 17.6 or you can write minus 17.6. Okay. All right, part B. What is the slope of the linear function? And I'm going to go ahead and write its labeling because this is going to ask me to explain. Now, remember, we're explaining the function, and the function is the coronary risk, which I just pulled from the table, is, and I want to look if I have a positive or a negative slope. Ours is positive, so we know that it is doing what? Increasing. and it's increasing 0.16% per what? One milligrams per deciliter of what? Go up to your table. Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Mm -hmm. that would be the explain that I would be looking for. All right, plot the data points. Okay, now I want to show y'all something on this one. So when you do your X and your Y, do your X axis or your horizontal axis up a little bit like this, because I need to, I want to show you something. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and label. So my function is R which is coronary risk, which is a percent. And my horizontal axis, my variable is I less level measured in milligrams per deciliter. All right, what's the first step on my calculator? Okay, so we're going to go to stat one, and then I want you to clear out, don't delete. So cursor over lift one, clear, down arrow. Cursor over lift, lift one, clear, down arrow. Now I can enter those, and just a reminder, <laughs> This variable is list one, function is list two. So back to list one will be 210 equal, 220 equal, 230 equal, 240 equal, and then 16 enter, 17.6, enter, 19.2, enter, 20.8, enter. So we went and we list one, which is your variable, list two, which is your function. Now, I think something's going to happen, but I'm going to pretend like I don't know that it's going to happen. Okay, so once we Enter our data, what do we go to? I want this to happen, so if it happens on you, you'll know how to handle it. I think I know. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. Did anybody have a line? I must have cleared out. I thought I still had that equation in, and so I thought it might show up there. Okay. Everybody good on this? 
Did it mess up again? Okay. All right. Now, if you went to your paper and you went, and based upon this, if you went like this, I would count it correct. I would not count anything wrong. But I do just want to point one thing out because I want you to have an understanding of math things. But remember how we talked about when we were graphing before about the vertical axis and the horizontal axis? And notice how both of these are dashed. So is this actually the very corner? No. So we know somewhere over here is the actual x-axis and somewhere the y-axis. Now, let me show you why on this, okay? Again, if you gave me this on a test, I would give you full credit. If you treated this as the y and the x, I would be fine with that. But here's what I want you to recognize. Come back up here to the formula. What is my initial value? Negative 17.6, right? What would that ordered pair be? Which means if this is zero, negative 17.6 is somewhere down here, isn't it? So down here is actually my initial value. And so the reason you can't see that is we know we have a line here, so this is actually like somewhere here, two, three, four. And that's not even a great line, so this one's not. But again, if, if you didn't recognize that, I'm not going to count off, okay? But I do want you to have that math understanding there, okay? All right, so we have plotted the data points so now it wants us to add the graph and where do we go to do that Why you, you got it and then after you enter this equation that we created up here what's the last button you'll push graph Oh, mine's taking a while, so it makes me wonder if I didn't do something correctly. Did yours come right up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm wondering if I entered in. For, oh, I see my error. Do you? Mm -hmm. I did zero six instead of one six. There we go. So then. Do we have to do that every time? Or can we just kind of know where the line is based off of that? Eventually, it won't always be linear. And so, yeah, you'll need to. So um, I would highly recommend that you still do it to get in the practice of how to do it. All right. And then part D, what is the coronary risk for a cholesterol level of? Okay. So again, I'm like, oh, I've gotten so into what I'm doing. I can't remember if this is the function or the variable. So I come up here, cholesterol level. So we were given the variable value. Mm -hmm. And the variable is I. So I equals 260. So we're going to put that into this formula right here. So how would I write it if I asked you to represent that in functional notation? All right. You got it. So that is 0 0.16 times 260 minus 17.6. Anybody have that number? And this is 24 what? percent of what coronary risk which is not good it's almost a fourth okay 
Okay, so we're gonna stop there. I do need to talk to you.